Hey everybody and welcome back to JT's Toy Shop. It's JT and you're in my shop. Hey, so today we're going to talk about some toys that I acquired just in the past couple of days. And I'm really happy about this. This is a really good pickup for me. Uh, it's been a little while since I've had like a really cheap deal that comes my way and uh, <laughs> that's a total lie I found something the other day but uh, anyway on offer up to get somebody to sell you something that's cheaper than what you can find on eBay is really hard because instead of having a yard sale they're trying to get full uh, price of what they see it online for so this guy seemed to really just want to get rid of what he had and uh, I was able to make contact before a few other buyers that were interested started to uh, ring his bell and bite on the hook so I committed and we made a really good friendly pickup uh, and I'm going to go through uh, some of these figures one by one and then we're going to talk about a few other things that I picked up from other locations. Uh, maybe uh, I believe there was a uh, bargain outlet that I was able to acquire some toys again from and I went to Target again so you know my friend Target and there's probably like four in my area so let's talk about three of them today. So to get us started, we're going to talk about the uh, major pickup I had this morning. And I went thrifting with my mom, and I told her, I said, hey, maybe in between some of the thrifting, we can stop off at this guy's place and pick up. And she was really nice. She was my uh, chauffeur today. And so we were able to uh, have fun together doing what uh, a mother and son should do on a day off, and that's to enjoy the things that we love doing most. And so during the pickup, I was able to acquire this bad boy, Mr. Green Eyes himself, the Incredible Hulk. And this, I believe, is a Marvel Select or Diamond Select. Oh, I can't remember. But anyway, it's a, some kind of so a Gallery Select. It's a Gallery Select toy. Uh, they both do Marvel and DC and a few other toy lines, but mostly those two that I know of. And this is just humongous. He is huge. He's going to look really good on my shelf. And I have a little spot in my bedroom that has like a curio, four levels with lights. And so he's going to look really nice there. Uh, I paid two, two twenty for about nine of these statuettes. And so I'm not really good with math, but I'd say I paid a little less than twenty dollars a piece. And I'm ex extremely happy with the uh, with the deal. I mean, each one of these retails for anywhere from about, on clearance even too, from about $30 to $50. So picking them up for a little less than 20 is pretty insane. And uh, that just really makes my day. It's been about a year since I had a big toy haul that really, you know, where I pay up large amounts of money to get a grip of toys. And so this was really cool. Uh, that was the Marvel end of it. One of the other larger ones that I picked up was this really cool medieval Batman. And it looks like he's uh, just defeated some type of octopus or squid-like creature. It might be that star, the star creature, which is now very popular in the McFarlane lines. But this one is just detailed like crazy. I'm digging it. Uh, the chain mail is pretty good, and the cape has a good flair to it. I mean, I like that. It's 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 soft goods, but still, you know, not you know like cloth, but it's just it's a harder plastic, just hard enough to keep its form. And what I thought too was cool was that shield right there. Uh, I wish that some of the uh, McFarlane toys, when he releases some of these types of figures, that he will add some accessories like that. And then even with the with the pads, oh, you can't see that. Sorry. Uh, even with the shoulder pads right here, they got these bats. Uh, if, if you can make that out, it is a bat head right there, and then both bats are covering his shoulder blades. That is just amazing detail. Now, the one thing that I noticed about this particular figure is that he is missing what probably was some type of sword. Uh, you know, I got mo all of these are in like pristine condition, so the seller uh, may still have that sword. And I hope, and maybe in the future, if he finds it, he'll make contact. But he's out of the country right now, and so I'm just happy that I have that particular figure. That and the Incredible Hulk are awesome. Uh, on the Batman level, now I'll turn around real quick and try to find it. Ah, oh, here it is. So this one. You know, I love DC and I love Marvel, but I know more about Marvel than DC. So this is a Batman from an alternate reality, a different universe. It's a, They have Earth numbers on them. And I forget who 
this guy, I don't know anything about this guy. So I'm just going to throw it out there. He has probably got the Speed Force running through him. And I do have another toy set. It's the McFarlane Double Pack with Flash and this particular Flash Batman. And uh, it's, it's a really cool double pack. I would assume, since the Flash is a regular Flash, that this is a bad guy. Uh, most anybody who's not Flash is going to be a bad guy, even if it's a superhero donning the the cowl as another character. But uh, anyway, that is a really cool figure. I would like to learn a little bit more about this, and I'm sure there's a video where someone will explain the whole entire story for me, because I don't have any of these comic books in my collection. Uh, most of my DC comics uh, consist of the older Superman, the older uh, Batman, and a few Wonder Woman. But uh, mostly Marvel. I'm a Spider-Man fan myself. As I don this DC, I'm just a, I'm a poser, man. Just a poser. So anyway, uh, now that we're still on that DC kick, ah yes, look at that beautiful dame. So we have a Harley Quinn, and it's not the animated Harley Quinn that I have come to be so fond of. I love the animated series and any statuette of any character in that is going to be cool. Uh, I believe this is probably taken from the Arkham Asylum video game and uh, this came out a few years ago. Missed out on the opportunity. I wasn't really into collecting these statues and a few of the other lines weren't really that popular to me at the moment but I have to say that this Harley Quinn is a really cool statue and uh, I'm just going to spin her around real quick so you can get a good look. Uh, yeah, uh, there was a little thing about the eye, one of the eyes there. The black one has no pupil, and so I'm wondering if she's winking, and it's just not that great of a paint sculpt. But uh, worse comes to worse, I can just make it look like she's blinking. So I was really happy with that figure. And I'm not sure if this also is an Arkham Asylum, but it is a really nice version of a Joker. And he has a really cool base with the smiling fish. And uh, he has got a card there. It's looking like he's getting ready to uh, try to tell what it is. Of course, it's a Joker card. And he's got a few accessories down there. The mallet and the TNT dynamite and the little chattering teeth that he's got there on the base. That's pretty neat. And the head sculpt is just really, really cool. And he's even got a little dagger hiding there. I love this suit. It's, it's really reminiscent of... The Jack Nicholson uh, version uh, and of course all the Joker comics prior to that movie but you know anytime I see this I always see that version of Jack Nicholson when he's when he's in that Tim Burton film so anyway that is a really cool pickup having the Harley and a Joker and so uh, with those there were a few other figures that we picked up um, I forgot her name she is in the latter portion of the X-Men storyline and I know she's either a White Queen or somebody I, it's, it's just escaping me right now uh, she always wore something slinky like bikinis or underwear for uh, uh, like a uh, whatever kind of clothes that they try to probably distract the villain with as the other guy comes up and hits him with their powers but anyway her powers was to get like super hard like diamonds uh, and I, I believe she may have had some telekinesis uh, abilities, uh, but I'm not really familiar with this. This also is a variant, so there's another one where she's not using her mutant abilities. And so anyway, it's a cool add addition to the collection of statues that I picked up. I'm not really a big fan of this particular figure. Uh, it is a nice figure, but it's, I don't know anything about it. And so maybe I'll keep it long enough to trade it off to somebody who does like X-Men stuff. But for me, right now, it'll just kind of stay in the back of my curio and uh, maybe next to the light bulb so it'll kind of uh, shine through her and kind of give her something special. So we're going to jump again to another figure. This one was a awesome, awesome find. And I have a Thanos figurine that's posable. It came with the Lady Deathstrike. I believe it was a... Uh, Marvel Select series, and I, it comes with this really cool base. Uh, this one I have to be careful with because uh, he has plugs right here, and I'm just not glued in. But once you get him pretty much in the stand, or in the stance, uh, he'll stay there, and he won't rock back or forth. Uh, but he does have the Infinity Stones, 
So it is part of the infinity. Um, it's just being that this is such a popular figure right now, and, and this probably did recently come out after the movie, but uh, just to have some more uh, toy memorabilia in regards to the uh, Infinity Game and fin Infinity War, Infinity Game, Infinity War, and Endgame uh, movies. I really like that. And when I grew up, one of the comic books I picked up was the Infinity War. So uh, I'm really happy to have some toys to go along with the comics that I can display on a shelf, maybe in the future. And then also to go along with a big power hitter, got Deadpool right here. That's pretty cool. And look at this. It's some kind of like pendant, a two-sided pendant. I didn't knew I didn't know that that came off, but it does. And you can probably wear it around your neck if you wanted to. Really nice figure. Uh, I don't know where the other sword went, and I don't know whether or not it's sheathed in here because there is a, a hole there for a sheath. But if it's missing, I again hope that that guy would uh, contact me but if not you know it's just he doesn't need to have two swords no one's going to notice it's going to be collecting dust in my bedroom so it's a really nice addition and uh, all these figures unfortunately didn't come with boxes but I've also purchased these in their boxes and I throw them away uh, I think there's only two that I've actually really want to keep and that's because the outer package was just as colorful as the figure uh, which was like a uh, Mysterio and then a Supergirl Alrighty. Oh, let's move to a different toy line all together, but also a really cool figure. So this was a Capcom versus Marvel release, and so I have Mega Man, which is a really cool version of Mega Man. That's neat. And then he comes glued to this base, so he doesn't pop off. That's all part of the same base. And then also now. Somebody help me out out there and tell me what Street Fighter person this is. I remember playing the game a little bit, but I wasn't really into Street Fighter, and so I was able to pick her up. They both have the same bases. They kind of like go together like this, like a road, and you would line them up probably against some Marvel characters. And speaking of which, <laughs> let's see, I got figures all over, all over the floor here, and we're getting kind of jammed up. So with those, there's these two that also have similar bases. They connect. And so now you would have Iron Man and Ms. Marvel fighting that uh, something Lee, maybe? Something Lee? Chung Lee? Ooh, maybe it's Chung Lee. That seems to be the first name that pops in my head for this, uh, this chick uh, toy from Street Fighter. And then the Mega Man. So anyway, Mega Man would probably fight uh, Iron Man here and then... Uh, the Street Fighter girl will uh, fight the uh, Marvel girl because <laughs> it's Miss Marvel. <laughs> She's a girl. Anyway, moving on, moving on. What else do we have here? Well, you know what? That was pretty much all the figurines, uh, the statues that I picked up. So, yeah, there was uh, the X Men chick, there was the Super Fast Man, uh, Batman, Super Fast Flash Batman, the Hulk and the Deadpool, the medieval. Batman, the Harley, and the Joker, Thanos here, and then the Capcom versus Marvel figures. And so 220 for all of those, I have to say, uh, is a really, really good deal. Uh, given that each one of these uh, retails for a lot more than that, uh, he didn't say why he was getting rid of them so cheap, and I don't really want to ask too many questions because the, until they're in my possession. So it was a really good experience. Uh, me and my mom were able to use a GPS for the first time and uh, while we were doing our thrifting and hunting, and she really likes that. I think she'll download it for her phone. And so we then went thrifting afterwards, and so I'm going to clean this up real quick, and uh, we'll go over what I picked up while I was thrifting today. All right. All right, so we just got some stuff kind of moved around a little bit, and uh, now we're going to talk about some of the toys that I picked up while we went thrifting with my mom. And one of the first places we stop off is uh, one of my favorite, and we've kind of adjusted how we come into some of our neighboring cities uh, for the thrifting because we find that the one at one particular spot has just uh, the staff puts out a lot more. Uh, the prices are, you know, you find some good days and you find others that are not so good. 
but I'm happy with this first place, and so we put it first on our map of things to do, and then we jump over to a city and we hit about three more, and then we head uh, home and uh, kind of go over our stuff. For me today, it was such a warm day, and after thrifting, I needed a nap. So anyway, to get us started, the first place we stopped off, as soon as I walked in the door, I found this. Actually, my mom spotted it, and it is a really cool looks like a Velociraptor. Uh, it still has a price tag of it uh, on it of about five dollars I paid for and it still works and there's some kind of USB port in the in the tail end here and you turn it on and it still works. Unfortunately and if you let it kind of sit there for about a minute he'll he'll kind of wiggle a little bit on his own but uh, it does require a remote control which I don't have and so I will look for one I'm gonna do a little bit more research on this toy I have seen these on the internet and uh, I just I gotta find a remote and see what this thing's capable of doing so what he does is he has wheels on the front and then he has really strong pads on his feet that are like rubber and when you can make him walk and so these are kinda like his guides keep him from tipping over and I'm sure he's got some other movements with the tail and whatnot but for five bucks it's super clean it ain't broke I wish it came with the remote oh man that would be in a fine and uh, I would even pay ten dollars if they had the remote because this is just a really cool looking dinosaur he has just a really nice nice look to it and he's got a, all his tail usually something would chew on the tail or the foot's broken or something but this is just super clean and for five bucks it's an investment uh, I will find the the missing piece that makes this thing actually tick and uh, I'd be happy to have it on my shelf and actually play with it I'm I want to scare the dogs with it and see what they, what, how they'll respond but definitely a cool dinosaur uh, next, as I turn the corner in this little this little spot, they have cool little troughs that you pick up toys out of. They're bagged, uh, little little bags here. You can kind of tell that somebody likes to color coordinate. So all the green stuff in one bag, all the black stuff in another, and then all the purplish, girly, pinky stuff in another bag. And so. Why you say, Justin, why as a boy, why would you look at what's in this pinky bag? Well, there's some toys out there you got to keep your eyes peeled for. And if you can look close, look at that. I didn't get to open it up or really get a good look. I know he's missing a tail, but there is a panther in there. So we're going to open up all three of these bags. We're going to go over the toys, uh, each one, and let's just get it started. Because we got no time to waste. Aha! Uh -huh. So there's a little dory. If you like dory. Uh, got some weird rubbery worm. That is weird. <laughs> I don't know what to do with that. Looks like a tapeworm <laughs> if it was all blown up big. Oh, there's two of them. So I got a blue. Got a blue worm. I wonder, this is probably part of a game. But I got some really weird rubbery wigglies. And I uh, got this weird toy here. Probably McDonald's. I'm not affiliated with, or have no knowledge of that. I got this uh, really poor condition of a pink uh, uh, little pony, and somebody painted on it, so it'll just be redonated. A lot of these toys I'll, I'll put in a bag, and once I get a lot of them, I'll, I'll take them in for a redonation. Uh, I got a little daisy right there. Something yucky. I might just just throw that away. It's a unicorn but it's so like cheaply made it's it's junk and it looks like it could be a choking hazard oh got another pinky worm <laughs> somebody got rid of something weird and uh, here it looks like to be some kind of Lego dinosaur my guess given the head sculpt oh this could either be if you can kind of get a good look at that that could either be a Game of Thrones or a Harry Potter uh, dinosaur uh, it looks like somebody has been gluing. Oh, the, well, it's kind of nice to have a kid that is customizing his own toys. But uh, I'm going to take this head off and the neck. I'm going to. I'll do so. I'll just save this and throw the rest away. But I can see what they were going to do, and uh, that's pretty genius. Uh, that's a pretty smart kid. So anyway, moving on. Let's get to the good part. 
That's why we opened it up. Oh, yeah. So, there's some good news and there's some bad news. Uh, this is not the greatest condition Panthor. Um, the, f uh, the flocking's a little jacked on the bottom. Uh, he's missing a, p a front paw right here. Uh, he's also missing uh, maybe the saddle. Definitely knew he was going to miss the tail, but it's just too bad. Uh, this could have been in b better shape at some point. But, you know, these kinds of toys, I mean, look at it. It's not like they make it to, to last. So uh, that's the company right there. And little parts like this, I'm surprised that they allowed it to get through the, uh, the child safety part of it. But uh, I'm really happy to have something like this. I can probably reuse the head for something else. Uh, I don't know yet. Uh, this is why I bought it. It's a pig and a poke. They're blind bags, and you can just take take the loss if, if there's a loss to be had, I guess. Another little, little My Little Pony. This one's actually in pretty pretty cute and in good shape, so I think I'll just set that one aside. With the other one. And I have no idea what this weird thing is. Just junk. I should have thrown away. And then we got some uh, more pink little pony and troll. So uh, the troll got good hair. I haven't watched this cartoon. I'm not really a big fan of these types of sing-along cartoons, but I know that Timberlake was uh, part of it, and uh, he's pretty cool. But anyway, they got to make money, right? So anyway, moving on, we'll go to this next bag here. Now this bag, the reason why I picked it up is because I saw this guy in it. He's some kind of bendy flex, kind of black Spider-Man? Anyway, he doesn't really pose very well. It looks like it's just like a bendy wire inside, and it's not the best toy. But once I get him posed, I'm going to put him in a little Spider-Man curio that I have in my room. Uh, in there as well came one of these clone troopers, Burger King or McDonald's toy. I had a couple of those, and you see those everywhere. And then uh, there's this little uh, cheap airplane here. And I don't know if that's a transformer or some kind of weird monster-looking thing. But it looks like you fold him down, and he turns into a car with a green eyes. I don't know what toy line this is. And you pop this little white thing underneath, and then he's like a monster. And then, oh, there he goes. And uh, I don't know if those, oh, those are like arms or ears. But anyway, that's pretty neat. Moving on. Oh, we got some two things that are hooked here. Got a monster, monster truck. Looks like a really cheap, generic version of a uh, dinosaur monster truck. There you go. Different. And I saw this in the bag. This is from... Uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. It's a two-sided plastic coin, probably from one of their toy play sets. So I'll hang that up on the wall. I I really I really dig that. That's cool. And if anyone out there lost their third place medal, well, <laughs> it's been donated <laughs> in a toys in a toys bag. Uh, here's another character. I don't know who this is. Any ideas? Just leave a comment below. He's kind of got like a xenomorph looking head with little teeth, but he's got a human body. Um, I don't know if it's DC. Let me see here. It is. It's a DC character. So thinking now who this could be, because I, I can't... Well, you know, it might be Suicide Squad. It might be that guy who played in Suicide Squad. I forget his name. Uh, he was a really good shot. He shot really well. <laughs> That's all I know. Uh and then there's a probably like a hungry hippo whale version uh, toy in there. So a lot of cheap cheap junk that gets put in these things, but they're just trying to blow out what's getting donated. Moving on to the green bag, our last bag, and I'm happy for it because of the first one wasn't all that great, and I'm really just glad to get the Spider-Man at this point. Uh, this is one of the main reasons why I picked it up. I collect these and. I have a whole bunch, and any size I'll get them, and I just I just like it. It's just they're cool. And one of these days I'd like to get me a little claw machine. I've seen them for sale, uh, for cheap, cheap, and I'll put a bunch of those in there and make a Toy Story theme. Uh, this also had 
a Ninja Turtle from the motion picture movie, the newest one that came out. Wasn't a big fan of this particular line, but I do have a couple of these, and I need the orange uh, guy right here. So, yeah. There it is, there. And I got a Yoshi. Looks like to be a Happy Meal toy. I'm sure everyone has probably seen these, either at a yard sale, a thrift store, or a swap meet. And then a little frog also came in there. Uh, this one looks like it's been chewed on or slashed, probably by a dog, but it's a cute little froggy. What else is in here? Oh, we got Blue's Clues, something for the donation bin. Uh, the head doesn't turn, it's a solid piece, so it's safety. Always safe for the kids. Uh, also, more junk that gets put in there. Yeah, junk. And then everything else in there, it looks like a couple of bouncy balls. So, anyway, I'm going to clean this up real quick and we'll get on to some of the other toys I picked at at another thrift. So, at the same place, after I picked up some of those grab bags, I moved over into the book and movie section. Uh, not really much in the movie selection today, uh, but I have found really good deals from them before. Uh, for instance, my James Bond collection just recently from them got upgraded at $3.99 for a whole uh, James Bond Blu-ray, or no, not Blu-ray, DVD collection. Uh, they must have thought it was a book because it came in like a, a book album and it had all the movies from the very first one all the way up to like 2014 which has that new guy in it. And so anyway, uh, because there wasn't any movies I started looking at magazines and look what I found. Let me get the glare off of that. So these are some Star Trek magazines. Uh, these are expensive when they were in the store and they are in pristine condition. There is not any dog ears. There's no damage, no water damage, anything. And so there's quite a few of them here. Let me uh, get ready to lay them down afterwards. So there's this one with the Voyager, uh, Ensign Kim. And then there's another one here that has uh, Counselor Troy. And then there's another one from Deep Space Nine that has Odo, the shapeshifter. Uh, maybe some information over here on Seven of Nine. So these just basically just kind of regurgitate everything that everybody knows, but probably adds a little bit of insight to the character or the person who made it. Uh, here we have Kate Mulgroon uh, that did uh, Catherine Janeway. And uh, I've never actually got to read any of these books before because they're too dang expensive when I saw them at the supermarkets. I think, uh, let's take a look. If you're in Canada, they're eleven ninety nine, and back in 1999 mind you that's a lot of money back in 1999 and then 7.99 US and this one here is another DS9 that has the new DAX and a little info on uh, the Defiant and Q it looks like and then the last one here was probably based after that movie uh, which had uh, Patrick Stewart and uh, Brett Spinner as data uh, I forget the name of it first uh, not First Contact. Was it First Contact? Yeah, it was First Contact, which was a really good movie. Uh, one that I, I uh, watch regularly and fondly uh, admire. It's one of their best. And then uh, as I walked past the magazines, there was the children book section, which I always stop off and take a look. Uh, one of my uh, early on favorites, I picked this one up for 50 cents, is Island of the Blue Dolphins. Yeah, I don't have a really uh, large... Uh, what do you call it? List of move, uh, list of books that I've read in my entire life. But this is one of the first ones that I remember reading in school. And then I kind of cheated and I watched the the movie because uh, we were doing that Pizza Hut book it program. And so anyway, I watched the movie and then I did my review on the book. Uh, that was a, I had to get that pizza. Uh, these ones here, uh, I don't know anything about them. But uh, they're, they're children's adventure books, and they're numbered, so there's probably like a series of this particular author, uh, Frank Peretti, yeah. And it, it's just kind of like probably young people or, or young adults, they, they go on adventures, and so anyway, it's a light read. And uh, yeah, I, I, like, I, don't, I don't really read the thick stuff, and you know, that when they get like Game of Thrones and, and movie 
based books. They're just it's hard for me to like read a thick book like that with the time. You know, everyone doesn't have much time. So if it's interesting, it's a short book. I'll read it. And it's a kid's book. Oh well, I'm a kid at heart. Uh, there was another one called The River. I thought that looked interesting. Yeah, they really got me with the uh, cover art. So anyway, I'll check that one out. And then here's one called The Sign of the Beaver. And I picked all these up for either 99 cents, 50 cents, or a quarter. And then my all-time favorite is Charlotte's Web. It's just a paperback version of the, of the cartoon. And I really, really like that cartoon. It was really good. And then I, I collect any movie memorabilia. And this one uh, is put out, mostly all these are by Scholastic, Shola, yeah, I can't even say that, Scholastic, Scholastic, maybe that's how you say it. And anyway, if you have one in your area, mostly they're for kids in school. I remember when I was in school, you would tell your teacher, this is one I want, you give them some money, and then maybe a couple weeks later they come in the, in the, in the classroom with your, with your pickups. And uh, this one's actually got some pictures inside. So anyway, cool, 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 cool. And then I uh, breeze through a few more of their books. And uh, don't judge me. I'm not a fan of all these. But I like the age. Got Dennis the Menace. Got a little bit of Snoopy, Snoop, Snoop, Charlie Brown. Uh, I don't like Snoopy and Charlie Brown, so I will find a home for those. Uh, this one is also more Charlie Brown. There's a lot of them. I picked them up because they're usually put out in the 70s. You don't see uh, books like this in good condition, so I can turn a profit on these. Uh, someone out there will want some of these guys. It just won't be me. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of Snoopy, and so anyway, like I'm just not a big fan of Snoopy. These guys are pretty funny. I remember, I remember those guys, the uh, cavemans. They had some really cool uh, artwork. I like those. I'll keep that one. Uh, here's some more Dennis the Menace. I'll keep that one. But all the Snoopies, I'll go ahead and I'll uh, I'll find a buyer. I'll put these on offer up and see if they bite, and I'll get some of my money back. So I paid 25 cents uh, a piece on those, and I'll make uh, a little little money uh, to pay for these toys that I picked up today. So uh, moving on, let me clear this stuff off, and we'll we'll talk about a little few more other toys. There we go. Alrighty, so we are able to uh, get a few other finds. Uh, a few of them are from uh, other thrifts, and that was another location I stopped off with my mom, and I picked up this Jason uh, Veritic, Ver Ver <laughs> I, I think his name is. Uh, he plays for the Boston Red Sox. Um, I'm not a big fan of baseball, but this figure is just an awesome version no matter who he is you know it's just having having a having the empire uh, and the the guy who plays a catcher uh, just having a catcher and the empire there for any diorama is is really awesome uh, this is a McFarlane's toy that came out uh, back in the day uh, it looks like a copy. anybody who's a Boston Red Sox fan would really appreciate having this uh, one reason why I don't collect uh, sports memorabilia is because uh, at work we were doing a jersey thing and I went to the thrift and I bought a couple jerseys and one jersey ended up uh, being some wife beater guy that in, that's in prison right now and then uh, other people they do bad things like drugs or something in their career uh, not everybody is a Michael Jordan or a Shaq uh, those are really cool uh, role models, I guess, if you're going to go into sports to look towards. But a lot of these guys fall short. I don't know this guy personally, but I picked him up just for the fact that it is just a really neat-looking toy. And it's still in the package. And I could resell this. I picked it up for seven sixty one, But that was like the coolest thing there at the thrift. And so I, I impulse buy. That's what it was. I bought something I didn't need, and I don't really collect. And so, anyway, shame on me. But anyway, let's move on to uh, out of the thrift now. And we're going to talk about a place I just recently discovered. It's uh, called Falling Prices. And they just moved into one of our neighboring towns. 
And I guess uh, how it works, the, the dynamic of how they are set up is every Tuesday is a new day. And it starts off at everything is six bucks. Whatever are in these large, giant uh, uh, Gaylord uh, bins of um, pallets that, that they're sitting on, uh, everything in there is six bucks. And the next day, what didn't sell is now four dollars. And then after that is a two dollar day, a one dollar day. And I believe there's a 50 and a quarter day. There's not really probably much left on a quarter day. They're closed on Monday, and then it all starts all over again. And so this is the first time I went this week, and I was really happy with what I found. Um, I went in on a $6 day. Well, first of all, I went in uh, the week prior on a $2 day, and we found some foodstuffs, you know, super cheap coffee, if you like drinking coffee. Uh, I don't really care for coffee. Um, but my parents do, and they go through tons of coffee. And so they were able to get a considerable uh, sum of coffee, and uh, this week was the same way. But I would probably wait until a dollar a day or a quarter day and see what's left. But when I went in the second time, it was a $6 day on Tuesday, and I saw bin of just nothing but He-Man toys, and they're all the same toy. It was, guess what, Faker. He just came out. And Target clearanced them out to almost extinction, and they still weren't selling. And so uh, more than likely what happened is they probably donated some of their damage to Goodwill, and then the majority of their pristine cases they sold in an auction, which is probably picked up by this company uh, who has probably bidding wars with other companies, you know, people who are doing the same thing. So for $2, guys... I paid I paid thirty nine ninety nine I think or twenty nine let's say let's say twenty nine ninety nine I think it was twenty nine ninety nine U S and I was happy I was happy I got it and then I saw Target was clearing some uh, to the lowest price of like eleven and then nine dollars and it's like gut wrenching it's like man if I just should have just waited you know and I they never had this many on the shelf when I went to Target. They probably had over a hundred of these fakers. And so shortly after, they all disappeared, and then they ended up at this place called Falling Prices. So if you have one in your town, look them up. See if they're in your area. Check them out. It is a lot of fun. Uh, but you're going to be in like a, that crowd of people who are just like greed crazy, you know. So you got to be fast. I would say bring yourself a large tote bag and try to get a cart uh, as soon as you get in, but I'm going to probably go without getting a cart and just bring in a large tote bag next time I go in uh, because they only had like 75 uh, carts and there were probably about 200 people right at the door. So anyway, I was happy that I went in on a $2 day. Long story short, I like to talk, I told you. And uh, I picked this guy up for 2 bucks, and I got 5 of them. I want to say I had 6. I can't find number 6, but I do have, a, I have one already, so I definitely do have 6. So I was able to get five, and uh, th from as many as they had, probably like 50 of them, I only got five, so 1%. <laughs> uh, I think they sold on the $6 day, they probably sold a lot of them on the $4 day, and $2 day was just uh, mostly packages that probably a, a resale vendor didn't want to pick up, because like this one, it's got a little... Uh, wear and tear on the box you know they're not the nicest and so anyway I only kept this one in the box to show you guys the other four are are already out of the box and so uh, these packages I don't really keep in the box I like to have them loose and I like playing with the heads and the arms and the hands it's just so cool so that was a really good find and then also while I was there the same day oh boy there's a sliding all over the place uh, Space Jam I saw these at Walmart and I know Target had them too, but Walmart had a huge amount of them. And I got the Batman and the Robin version of Space Jam. So I got Bugs Bunny, Batman, and then I got LeBron James, Robin. And those are really cool figures out of the entire wave, I'd have to say. Those are the best figures. Uh, there was another LeBron that looks like Blade, like an animated series Blade. And if I ever see him, I'm going to pick that up just so I can have an animated version of, of Blade. Because I think the next Blade, he should have a like a, bow, uh, a goatee or something like that. It looks good. Alrighty. Friday. Found these. I thought were pretty nifty. 
These are Bath Time Finger Puppets from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Nickelodeon. And I know somebody where these are going to go. Uh, finger puppets are the same as, I guess, hand puppets. And uh, being a Ninja Turtle fan, I'm sure that individual is going to appreciate them. So off those go to a little goodie box. And then also a little cool surprise I found. I thought these were shampoos. So I didn't pick them up at first, and then I saw it said uh, Xenomorph somewhere on the box. And I just grabbed it, and then I found out it's these cool little uh, nesting doll sets. And so it starts off with the large alien, and then you got Ripley, Ripley with the cat hissing. And then it looks like you got the, uh, the android guy, I forgot his name. And then there's the other guy, probably the first one, they got it attached with one of those face huggers, and then you got a face hugger xenomorph as a small one. So anyway, uh, this is also going to go off to somebody I know, uh, and then anyway, that'll be a nice little boxing for them to unbox. And then we move on to, we're done with thrifting, and we were done with the bargain place. Uh, I, I was really happy with that place, and so highly recommend the uh, experiences is uh, really fun. Uh, we went to Target the other day. This wasn't today, this was the other day, and I found this really cool DC Direct Shazam. Uh, not Shazam, sorry. <laughs> it's uh, Black Adam, and he is a bad guy. And there's another movie version of Black Adam that's coming out that has Dwayne The Rock Johnson and that is also a really cool figure made by the same people uh, McFarlane Toys. Uh, this particular toy right here I really wanted uh, to get the rock version of him and then do a head swap put the rocks head on on this body and I was at Target so here's a short story uh, some toys are street dated and the Black Adam toys are street dated for August the 1st and I believe today is the 29th so when I picked this toy up I think it was like the 27th or the, or the 26th and so they wouldn't give it to me uh, I did go to a Target today being the 29th and I found another one at the same exact store and I wasn't mad I, I wasn't frustrated or anything but I did take it up to one of the associates and I let him know to say hey you know the other day I couldn't buy this because it's street dated and here's another one on the shelf so uh, is this can I buy this now or is this still street dated and he says yeah it's street dated and then uh, he put it in a cart so get those off the shelf man I don't even want to see those until they're ready to buy uh, it is disappointing when you find a gym and you can't take it home with you but uh, there will be thousands of those hitting the shelf uh, any type of uh, cinematic movie toy line usually doesn't sell as fast as the uh, as the generic uh, version of the characters faces and so anyway that was a really cool find and then also today I went to my very closest neighboring target and I found this guy on clearance for eighteen dollars eighteen bucks I picked him up this is a thirty dollar figure and I believe this is like a carbonized version of this heavy infantry uh, Mando but I'm really super excited to have them. Uh, I then contacted an associate at Target and I said, where can I find more of these? And she said there is a, uh, a Target in a neighboring town that had two and then in, a, in another town on the north side of that town was uh, a, a one. So I did the traveling and spent the gas and I was a little disappointed. So I didn't find them. Uh, they're in inventory, but the first store that has two out of all of the targets I've ever gone to, uh, this one is in need of a store manager. Uh, that person needs to be fired. Uh, there are just aisles and aisles of toys that are out of place, go backs like crazy, and there is no rhyme or reason. Then uh, there is no reason for, for that to be. Uh, but it makes it hard as a collector when you know that they have something and you just can't find it and then you're sorely disappointed when you're empty-handed walking out. So shame on that target, but all the other targets that I went to today were immaculate and they're really well ran. Uh, sometimes some stores will probably have a bad day. This target has had a bad month 
Uh, I think it's had two bad months, and they just recently had a remodel, so there's no excuse to let a remodel store uh, take take uh, it to the pooper, you know, in, in, a, in a kind way of saying it. And then also, uh, this figure here I picked up at a, another Target, and I just grabbed him because he's going to be completing my uh, Build-A-Wave figure, the Star star figure and there's a couple of them here to be had down at the bottom I have the Superman version and I saw the Wonder Woman version of uh, Superwoman but this is Owlman and I don't have this figure I'm really happy to add it to my collection and I will be taking this out of the package to build that figure so really clean nice figure to be had and then there is another figure that I picked up uh, at the uh, at the Target that I had a bad experience uh, looking for the other uh, toys so I literally I'm really good at treasure hunting uh, toys that are in and that are being hidden and so that was probably the only cool part about being in there is I ripped up those toy shelves uh, looking for those two other Mandos and uh, I didn't find uh, those Mandos but I did find a wrecker from the Bad Batch series and I looked him up on their little scanning device and he was originally 3149 I believe and they had him on sale for 21 and so I went up to the register the price came up just like it scanned and I was really happy with that uh, I do have one that is in a mint box and this was not by any means a mint box so I will be able to take one of my records out and then still keep one fresh uh, minty fresh for a future time and also on clearance were these retro Star Wars figures and so I found a really cool Mando in his Beskar armor it's a retro version of him I have um, a couple of other figures uh, in the retro wave that are Mandalorian anything Mandalorian I pick up I just really really love the show uh, I'm a little sad that Cara Dune, Dune is no longer going to be reprising her role, but uh, maybe that will change in the future. And then also, too, before we get started, uh, there are these little blind boxes. These have little micro machine people in them, and according to the box, they're, uh, they're, this is actual size. So you get a little micro machine, and then you get a land speeder. And they had Ahsoka, Darth Maul, the Mandalorian, and a trooper. And I want to say there was one other one, but let's just say that there's those ones right there, and it's just kind of like a blind pack. So I wanted to save this until I did the video to open it, but these are $5.99, and that's a lot of money for one little micro machine. Um, but I really want that Mandalorian bad. So let's open this right now, and we'll just hope and pray that this is going to be a Mandalorian. And it's not, right off the bat. And, you know. This is still really a good find. Uh, it's a little soldier um, with a speeder bike. So we got a clone trooper and a speeder bike. And it even comes with a cool stand. So I found this one at a Target. I'm hoping that there'll be more. I really, really want to get the Mandalorian that small. I mean, that's just awesome. And it would be probably one of the first little micro machines of the Mandalorian that I've come across. But that right there is really, really cool. Not $5.99 cool, but that was just a, a fun little unboxing for you uh, guys to watch me do. So anyway, uh, let's move on, shall we? Okay, had to move some of these toys out of the way. Uh, one last stop we did a couple days back. I was able to stop off at my GameStop, my local GameStop, and... Two of my GameStop buddies hooked me up with these. They were on the shelf, and I just walked over and went cluck, cluck, and took them right off the shelf. So I think I'm at five now with the Death Watch uh, figures. Uh, really super excited that I was able to get my hands on at least that many of them. Uh, I will pick up more if I do find them, because um, there were going to be other people like me who will do army building, but... Uh, I'm really happy with having this many. Uh, I picked up a couple uh, the other day, or last week, and then a single the week before. So I'm, I believe I'm at five. And then with the, the heavy infantry guys, 
Uh, I have one of these is going to be left in the package. This one is going to be the Lucy Goose because he's got damage. And then I also took the barcode off to give to a target associate. And uh, anyway, this will be a loose figure coming out right now. And the uh, other ones will also be out of the package soon. But I'm really looking forward to having like a Mandalorian Season 3 and learning a little bit more about the Death Watch and then a little bit more just about uh, Man Mandalorian lore all in general. And I'm just super attached to this franchise. It's just... It's really fun to watch, and the Obi ones were also a really good addition too. Uh, I was kind of hesitant after watching the first uh, two episodes, but then it really just picked up speed. So Star Wars wise, there are many deals out there to uh, keep your eyes out uh, peeled out for, and uh, there's going to be a lot of new DC multiverse figures coming out. I'm starting to see them uh, popping up online, and then also Hasbro. No, not Hasbro. Is it Hasbro? Anyway, whatever toy line that I subscribe to is showing me all these pictures of uh, toys that will soon be coming out. So I'm going to have to work more, try to get some of that overtime, and really grind the manager gears in order to make more money. Because uh, I got bills to pay, you know, people? And then these toys are just not making it easy. So anyway, guys, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for listening to me yak. And uh, I hope you see some toys here that you really like. And uh, let me know in the comments below which ones you like the most. And I'll see you in the next episode. Take care.